Very good afternoon uh, from Asian College of Teachers. My name is Shaunak and welcome to yet another Facebook live show. So often we find that the students that we are trying to inspire are the ones that inspire us. We remember uh, our own education system and we remember the teachers, not the methods and techniques. The teachers are at the heart of our education system. Yes, you have guessed it rightly that we are about to talk about special education and it takes really someone special to reteach someone very special. I would uh, take the immense pleasure and honor to introduce to our guest speaker today, Dr. Amrita Panda. Now, I don't have the audacity to introduce Dr. Panda, 15 plus years into research, clinical practice and teaching. And she has been catering to autism, uh, parental learning, counseling, adolescence and sex education, including trauma care. And she is now the foundation of Deep Ranjani Foundation, uh, which deals with specially abled children. She is a doctor of philosophy and a master in arts. As far as the research experience goes, she is from the Department of Psychology at the University of Calcutta. And she has been a psychology into psychology research unit in ISI Calcutta. And she has uh, submitted uh, very important international papers and the list goes on. So we are, I, I won't take much time to uh, introduce and carry on with the list because Dr. Panda would be immensely um, you know, unhappy with me possibly because she told me not to introduce and just skip it to uh, a little bit tits and uh, parts. So a uh, very warm welcome Dr. Amrita Panda to this very special Facebook live show. A warm welcome from Asian College of Teachers. Thank you, Mr. Bhattacharya. Thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, we will directly come to the point because uh, it has been, I have been interacting with Dr. Panda for more than two and a half, three years. And I always seek this opportunity to talk to her, not only to me, but to, uh, and, you know, enrich the uh, entire family of Asian College of Teachers, as well as the parents and those who are listening today uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, get that knowledge what Dr. Panda has. So, uh, Dr. Panda, I would directly come to the question because you have been dealing with so many years into special education and particularly because we uh, we would like to know more about autism. I really um, don't know and I'm really in doubt that do we at all, I mean to say the parents as well as the teachers, do we have a general awareness of what autism? So my first question to you, doctor, would be if you can just give us an idea, what is autism? I, I, I'm sorry, we should not call it autism. We should call it autism spectrum is, disorder. Right. So if you can let us know. Sure, sure. So uh, thank you, Mr. Bhattacharya, for this wonderful introduction and uh, the wonderful question to start with. So uh, as you asked, what is autism? It's still a question uh, to all of us, those who are working for such a long time with this wonderful people and uh, the primary and very basic thing with autism is that they are, there is a lot of variability in characteristics and features. But the primary things, the very common things which is there throughout the spectrum is that, uh, that, that, um, that segregates autism from other kind of developmental diseases. It's like their self-absorption they are absorbed within them, themselves. Uh, when they are present in a room, it feels as if they are not present at all. And whatever is happening around, it's not, it feels like it's not touching them. So uh, as my mentor once said, it's like a glass wall uh, surrounded around the person and the person is unable to break that glass door and reach out to people in the outer world and the outer world equally is unable to break the glass door and reach out to the person, reach out to the pain, the suffering, the happiness, the thought process of the person. So as if they are confounded by a glass door all around them and living in a uh, loneliness, which, is, which we call autism spectrum disorder. Among the characteristics, there are uh, difficulty in eye contact which is a primary sign of autism. 
when we identify kids with autism the first thing that we ask the parents is to look into your eyes directly so that is the first thing and of course as they grow up we observe difficulties in communication in language and communication and when we say when i say language and communication it doesn't mean that if whether they are verbal or non verbal even there are many kids who are verbal but uh, they are unable to communicate their feelings so they have language they they can talk they have the ability to speak but they are they do not have the ability to communicate their inner thoughts feelings needs etc so one is eye contact the second is the communication difficulty and the third is the difficulty with socialization skill that is they are unable to reach out which is also a a, a i mean i i would say which also comes from the difficulty of uh, the challenge of communication difficulty but at the same time they cannot relate to society societal norms they cannot understand the ways of acceptable ways of society so uh, these are the the basic three challenge areas which combined we call autism spectrum disorder okay that's a wonderful uh, you know example dr panda to start with that we the, the, the students uh, the the person as well as everybody is surrounded by the glass wall and neither he or she is able to communicate and neither the other world so but just to because this is a very learning phase i will i have made a point so first of all would be the eye contact second would be the communication third would be the socialization my next question to you doctor is that when we talk about the general spectrum generally for example rgb or the color of spectrum that we tell that is a wide range so why do we call it as autism uh, why do we call it as a spectrum disorder it does it contain a certain range of uh, abnormalities it's called autism spectrum disorder because of the variability of symptoms and uh, okay. where we started mr bhattacharya like you asked me what is autism the thing is in practicality it's so different for each and every kid and we say that when i when i work with a child with autism when i know one child with autism it's it's that that i know just one child with autism each and every one is so different okay from the other so there is a lot of variability and this is the reason we call okay. it autism disorder because of the variability of the symptoms got it got it got it got it my next question doctor would be that because you have explained so in a very lucid language we call it spectrum because once we know one particular person then there are other which has got various disorders and that is why we call it spectrum eye contact communication and socialization are the primary factors my next question to you uh, doctor would be can it be considered as a mental disease if so why if so if not then why it is so that is a wonderful question because we live in a society particularly i'm sure there are viewers from all around but uh, the country that we belong in i mean from india uh, it's still considered as uh, what we say they are still considered as lunatic they are uh, uh, we put them inside the home they do not allow them to socialize we feel ashamed to take them out uh, to the society to celebrations and all Uh, but the thing is, uh, I think we all have started understanding this as professionals and as a society that autism is not a disease. It's not a. Uh, it's okay. not a medical condition. It's not a medical illness. I would say. Okay. But we consider autism as a condition. They are different. As me and you are different as human beings. It's just that they are different from. the dominant uh, dominant characteristics of uh, human uh, human nature so they are simply different they have certain set of characteristics which are different from the neurotypicals so it's just a condition it's not disease okay. we cannot make them like us it's a condition it's not possible parents ask uh, very often that will they be normal 
so that is our first communication with the parents that they are not abnormal they are different just as okay. uh, father and mother of the child are different human beings the, the child is also a different human being he has got a different nature okay absolutely although it won't be relevant but still i cannot stop my curiosity to ask as a doctor how do you term it as a disease and uh, how do you differentiate between a uh, uh, as a condition and a disease i understand what you told that it is uh, it is a condition but how can we differentiate with a disease how will you tell on that yes so when you have typhoid it's a disease when you have gas gastric ulcer it's a disease because this is something that has generated over time it has got a reason it has it has generated over time and it's curable it's curable it's an aberration of okay. the of the original organ whatever is the disease in your body but they are born like okay. that they are born like that it's not okay. something which is curable it's not a disease that means you are saying doctor that it is some typhoid or, or whatever that means clinically it can be proved that there is something which we termed as a disease yes when is autism is purely a condition if it is a brain condition uh, it's like the the when we call it an illness that illness is generated over a time and it may happen at the age of 10 at the age of 20 at the age of 50 and it can get it can also get cured with proper intervention but for autism this okay. is something we are born with and we cannot cure autism the concept of cure doesn't come because they are they are not uh, it's not a disease they are like that it's their condition yeah okay uh i once we had done with autism as a condition we known my next question to you doctor would be what are the features i mean to say you told that eye contact communication and socialization now i was reading through an article of possibly because talking to you would require a certain amount of preparation <laughs> from my side i was finding that when you repeat certain things on a continuous basis for example touching a particular object etc now this can be considered as an autism i would request you if you can just elaborate on the features or rather the signs of detecting autism right as i mentioned earlier eye contact is a is an important marker they do not look look straight into the other person's eye that is one thing and they have okay. a repetitive behavior pattern repetitive behavior pattern which we call lack of flexibility that is they try to do things in a similar way as a child we it's very common when uh, we are, that we observe that they line up toys or line up small things on on the floor which is very common for uh, kids with asd and this is because of lack right. of flexibility they do not uh they do not uh, use the they do not use the line or do not make a different line every single day it's just the same if okay. they eat uh, at eat breakfast at 9 o'clock in the morning they tend to eat at 9 o'clock in the morning every single day if they eat uh, milk and cereal for breakfast they tend to eat the same thing for breakfast every single day so they lack flexibility so they Uh, continue but a uh, doctor time. sorry to interfere yeah when we are talking of eating a breakfast say for example or maybe dinner at exactly 9 o'clock i have seen people that who maintains that kind of a punctuality so is it a punctuality that you are emphasizing or is it the wonderful same kind question. of a food wonderful question mr bhattacharya uh, but then uh, it's not punctuality because say if i eat at 9 o'clock at night and if for some reason i cannot eat at 9 o'clock and i happen to uh, finish off my dinner at 10:30 at night i won't get distressed but they will be distressed i can reason out that oh. today i am unable to eat because of some reason and i adjust to the situation as per my abilities but they get distressed got it distressed with got changes it. okay they get distressed even okay. if the color of the wall uh, gets changed mm -hmm. suddenly 
so that is uh, the other feature and definitely as the uh, viewer also mentioned vishakha i think uh, vishakha yes right. absolutely a uh, hand flapping is a very important uh, feature of autism it's not like every single child flap hands but that is also very common in uh, children for autism and of course the difficulty in communication like as per the developmental milestones it's observed that most of the kids with autism they do not start talking at the designated time and their developmental milestones okay. are, delayed, are delayed so that is something which is uh, which is again another feature and there are uh, there are very small but very significant okay. features that do not get people with uh, kids with autism they do not get hurt very easily even if they fall down they right. they hit something very badly they do not feel they do not express the feeling of pain uh, the way the neurotypical kids do so these are the very small symptoms that we observe within uh, uh, children uh, and we consider it as an early sign of autism uh, um, i know it would be very unwise to question you doctor but Uh, what is could be the um, uh, you know age when autism is developed? I uh, mean to say, is there any particular Observe. cutoff age Observe. when just parents so try? Usually, usually uh, it is observed when the child is about two two and a half. But with experience and professional expertise, okay. it's also possible. I mean, those who are very senior in this profession, they can also identify symptoms. Uh, at one and a half years or something like that, it's possible because there are signs. Okay. There are signs. Okay. And, uh, so India, primarily, uh, you would suggest that. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that in India, yeah. the diagnosis Please of autism uh, legally starts from the age of three. The legal diagnosis is possible only after the child is three years old. That's the Indian standard. Three years old. Okay. right so primarily what i would uh, summarize from this till now is that uh, eye contact if it is not directly to the eyes the parents have to take a note communication you are saying that if the child is falling or getting hurt uh, she or he won't be able to communicate and socialization in terms of communicating and uh, you know uh, interaction with the uh, neighbors or with their parents uh, that would won't happen right okay fine we will come to the next point but uh, just a quick wrap uh, those who are joining late with this show we have with us dr amrita panda joining us uh, in order to discuss something very important regarding special education and till now we have discussed uh, uh, on general awareness of autism it is not a mental disease it is a condition and what are the signs okay uh, uh, doctor i have gone through your profile it is immense to be very honest i cannot understand what the technical thing that you uh, which is which was mentioned but yes i was um, i i could see that you have uh, com- contributed immensely to the international society through journal i will come to that part but my, what is keeping me uh, you know busy is that how would you consider or how would you uh, i i won't say rate but how would you tell the awareness of special uh, education as a whole or the entire world of special uh, education uh, with the international community uh, vis-a-vis the indian uh, standard what would be your views on that so uh, in comparison to the international community the scenario in india had been very very different even uh, some Five eight years back, but we are very hope, hopeful that the scenario is changing. Uh, the diagnosis, the uh, awareness of parents have increased a lot, and uh, in the past, maybe even ten years back, people used to call them mad. Uh, that has got reduced. People know that they are different. It's not madness. People. Uh, reach out to in india people reach out to these kids with love affection and res- respect to some extent at least at least in front of the child and the parent they try to show some respect these days which was unfortunately not there even 
five ten years back. Uh, that way, it's different. There are many good uh, professionals who are taking up special education, which is very inspiring to the field. That uh, previously the field is so financially so less rewarding. Uh, people had no uh, interest. Children. I mean, the students had no interest to choose as edu edu special education as their profession. But then uh, these days, uh, good students, scholars, researchers, practitioners are coming up, and they have devoted their life to this field, which is a wonderful thing. It is a very promising thing for our country, and I believe, I hope, we all know that the number of ASD has gone crazy in last uh, five years. These days, it's uh, one in every 45 newborn, uh, one child in every 45 newborn, newborn falls in the spectrum. So that is a horrible number. And more and more uh, professionals, good professionals need to come up. The parents need more awareness. Previously, what we used to observe that parents uh, they used to live in denial for a very, very long time. Even when the, uh, the child, their, their son or daughter uh, are like 14, 15, they wouldn't have taken them to a doctor or to a psychologist or for an assessment. But these days, early detection is definitely, it has increased a lot. And uh, for autism okay. management, for autism management, the early, uh, the management process starts that is the best thing for the individual i mean as i said it's though it's not a disease but they have to live in this uh, neurotypicals dominated society so they need to connect to the neurotypicals the neurotypicals need to connect to them they need to be in they need to learn independence functional independence so the early uh, it uh, it starts that is the best uh, possible management process Okay, one thing uh, keep me uh, haunting this question. Now you have uh, you told me about the uh, you know early detection around about three years in India, but a professional eye can detect some uh, something prior to that. My question to you, doctor, is that a child being born in a society where the parents are at unrest, there is sexual harassment, uh, fight between the parents, neighbors. I mean to say it is it is not a conducive environment when a child is bringing up. Is it possible that after four or five years from the birth, that person or that child develops autism? Um, I don't think, uh, I don't think, I mean, the, uh, the reason of autism is still not known. But uh, in autism, it's very common that the parents okay. complain that the uh, child was absolutely fine till the age of two, two and a half, and then the symptoms came up. So that is possible, but it's not because of the parental discord or the stress or something caused after birth that gives rise to this kind of okay. uh, symptom. Okay. The symptoms, okay. the manifestation means, start okay. at, an, at a later age, but then it was already, always there. That means circumstantial, uh, I would say, situations won't contribute to autism. It would manifest after at a later age, but situations after birth won't contribute to autism. Before oh, birth, yeah, that if, is, the that if, if the condition impacts autism, we are still under research. We do not know. The reason right. of autism right. is not known yet. We are in absolute reason of dark. autism not yes. absolute dark, right? Now, uh, doctor, to be very honest with you, I have visited your centers and my eyes are full of tears the day when I first visited and then I came out of that and I went back and talked to my father and my mother because father is associated with one uh, non-government organization, blind people, not really into autism. And then I went forward and I really thought that how you and the respected teachers control, because I have seen, you know, when I used to sit in the reception, uh, the students coming quite tall and then constantly saying, good morning, ma'am, good morning, ma'am, good morning, ma'am. And how they were howling and crying. 
it is beyond the comprehension of my small brain that how do you really manage and how do you get things through my question to you would be if you in brief tell us about your journey because we, we, you, we, i mean to say you you have been into this field as you rightly told that in order to uh, go into that you really need to burn your hands so i would quote to all the viewers that here is a person dr panda who has burnt her hands into autism uh, your views in your journey please uh, we would love to listen the first thing that you said about uh, our organization i absolutely appreciate that but i would like to mention there are numerous such organizations in west bengal in the rural sectors in throughout west bengal and throughout our country who are working uh so dedicatedly every single day every month if throughout the year and over 20 25 30 years with some organizations and it uh, it really makes me feel wonderful to see such dedicated group of people maybe they are not very highly educated but the kind of love the kind of dedication they have for the film that is exemplary and as you said that it brought tears to you uh, i was when you say this it it just crossed my mind that uh, what brought tears to you actually made my life so wonderful and i'm sure i'm not alone maximum peer maximum professionals who are in this profession they are so happy with the, they are so satisfied with their profession even though this profession is not economically rewarding but the kind of happiness satisfaction that all of us experience day in day out that is i mean that is something uh, unthinkable in other professions and uh, as you asked Absolutely. about my journey uh, in the beginning you mentioned my about my research career so i just wanted to share with the viewers that uh i started off with my uh, research work in calcutta university department of psychology then i shifted to uh, isi indian statistical institute kolkata and i always thought that i will be continuing my research career uh, plan to move abroad and during my research work when i visited uh, i visited across uh, india and all the top tier global international conferences across the globe and while i presented my work the feeling the first feeling that touched me was that it's so the the international society and the societies uh, that i belong and the society where i belong to it's so different they have progressed uh thousands years in compared to the society that i come from so uh from from that perspective uh when i was presenting my paper in american psychological association i and i was uh and if everyone encouraged me with my work and everything uh but i had the feeling back of my mind that this, this is meaningless when it comes to uh, my work my contribution to my country or to the society that i belong to because the place where i come from they still call this kids as man so the high uh, uh, the cutthroat cognitive research it doesn't mean anything if the kids are locked inside the room and if the parents are ashamed of their kids and these kids are not uh these kids are not capable of enjoying the basic rights of life so that was a time when i realized that i am not enjoying research anymore and i came directly to uh, clinical practice and administration where i felt i had i have uh, got a lot of opportunity to touch uh, thousands of life directly and make at least somewhat somewhat difference in their life and it's very rewarding and that is why we uh, we we coined the term teach and touch lives which is one of the uh, key words of asian college of teachers so uh, doctor if i can consider so uh, from the research you could have been into a different field you have you have chosen a, a, a road which is full of uh, thorns not full of roses so if i may uh, summarize that that means uh, from the research 
what uh, instigated you to bring into something which is totally different is that you thought and you clarified that research or fundamental research won't do good anything to the society until i come up and treat them in I a proper say, dignified I, I won't say the fundamental research won't do good but then if i do not do the fundamental research the world is already moving to that direction if i come out of that fraternity it won't uh, bring in a lot of change in that fraternity it, it, but if i can change my way of working and if i can join uh, at grassroots level it can make a lot of difference to people's life absolutely uh, doctor uh, if i may ask you one more thing that uh, iep uh, i mean to say uh, individual education program to be very honest we are not aware about that is it a license is it something the teachers need to acquire is it something that the institution need to acquire if you can uh, share some light on that so it's individualized educational program so when a child uh, when there is a diagnosis for the child and the child comes for management so the first thing that we uh, do is we try to know about the child in in details so the, the individualized educational program is understanding the strength and weaknesses of the child the support system of the child and accordingly plan a curriculum for the child to make him or her functionally independent to do okay. the uh, required work with the child and this is not okay. a license this is not a license this is a checklist kind of thing which is uh, which is free to use so individualized educational program this is the must before we start working with any child in the okay in the okay so that means it is a checklist through which somebody has to go through whether these points are actually met with or not yeah it is it is more like it's not just the uh, i mean confirming if if the child meets certain certain criteria or not it's also like understanding the strength and weaknesses of the child as i said that in autism okay. every single child is so different and it, in the developmental disability itself every single person is so different so it's very important to understand the person and understand the need of the person the need of the family because there are people okay. from different social economic status the priorities are completely different for different families so it's very important to set up an educational plan a curriculum for the child as per the reality as per the need of the child and the family okay that is iep okay uh, my kind apologies to ask you this question i went through your uh, you know the the journal the international part that you have published what was the contribution if you can tell us a little bit on layman's language we are really absolutely. i think the all the audience this, is keen to hear that moment, at this moment i absolutely forgot which one you were talking about if you can give me the title i can definitely explain but i completely forgot the title of it so uh, i think this has it has got something to do with um, sexual issues of autism so absolutely uh, uh, yes Adoles adolescence and sexual issues of adolescence autism. right right so, right uh, we live in a society where we do not talk about sexuality as adults and when it comes to uh, kids and kids with special needs this is something which the parents are not ready to acknowledge that the child is having adolescence issues and uh, in many parts of the country even now they feel like this is something abnormal so the okay. paper the research was about how to uh, how to train the kids to deal with the adolescence issues how to train the kids and the parents with the adolescence issues with the, with their sexual needs and to propagate the fact that sexuality is a common and natural and beautiful thing even for the kids of this age with special needs absolutely i think that, that is a phenomenal good. work and uh, yeah, yeah. That, and i would like to mention here that the, that paper, particular paper was uh, done in collaboration with dr professor malika banerji and dr oh, dr okay so it okay, was a okay great so i should mention yes. it i think right. we have a quick question, question. 
Yeah, yeah. quick question with Kanta Keshwani. Is autism yeah. related to high, high IQ, IQ level? level. It's, it's a very and interesting how, question. Uh, wonderful question, Kanta. So definitely there are high functioning kids with autism, high functioning individuals with ASD. Uh, but the global glorification of autism and high IQ is not the reality. So uh, okay. often there are claims in the social media and journals, books that some very, I mean, some a, a celebrity person, he had autism. Uh, but the in reality, it's not that easy. He or she may have autistic feature. I may have autistic feature. But having autistic feature and being di diagnosed as ASD, these two are completely different things. So hmm. uh, a celebrity who is, aut who is autism, who's having autism, that is possible. But then uh, that 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 sh that should uh, that should also include a lot of struggle in the person's life and the high iq part yes there are individuals with autism who are pursuing uh, college uh, and master's degree and phd degree in our society in throughout the world that is possible high iq is definitely a part of uh, i mean Intelligence quotient can be variable for different individuals. One may have low IQ, one may have high IQ. So the individuals with ASD and high IQ, they, us they are usually capable of pursuing academics. So, and the individuals right. with ASD features and low IQ, it's difficult for them to pursue regular academics. So that is how it right. is. Possible okay. to have so high yeah, yeah, high IQ. If you may name, because you know better than anybody else. Okay, we have a question. I would like to take. Asta is asking, what are the things that we should keep in mind while designing IEP? I think it's a relevant question. Asta, uh, as I mentioned, that while designing IEP, we should first we should understand the child uh, very thoroughly. We should understand the strengths and the limitations of the child and then it's very important to know the child through the parent that is the kind of kind of culture they have in the family the kind of requirements they have in the family what are their priorities and the, of course while designing iep it's very important to, uh, to uh, consider the psychological assessments of the child the iq part and the adaptive behavior so these are the things that needs to be taken care of. And uh, I think the, I always say this to my colleagues, the juniors, everyone, that when you do an IP, it shouldn't be uh, the best IP that you have done in life. It should be the best IP for that particular person. So it's, person, not, right. our expertise. it's not our expertise. It's the need of that person, particular person that we need to satisfy. Because the word itself is individual education, so it has to be individualistic, right? Doctor, if you may tell regarding this IQ level with Kanta asked, so uh, can you just tell us a few, you know, I, I won't say celebrity because you rightly pointed out it is more of a glorification, but few of the, you know, scientists, academicians who used to have autism but have a very high IQ level, uh, if you can tell a few of them, I really do not know any such person. Okay. So we, okay. Uh, there is a claim that Einstein had autism. So yeah. I do not know. I do not know if he was diagnosed to have autism. Absolutely. Have, These are all myths. He yeah. had autistic features, but I'm not sure autistic if this features. is done with a with a with an assessment report. So right. But I think yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, see, what, what happens is that, doctor, if you take, you know, in general, academicians or those who are into science and research, in general, they tend to uh, react or tend to interact less with the uh, individual or the, with the society. And that is quite normal. Now, the question is that if somebody is coming, I know, I know of a scientist and uh, one of the greatest logician of uh, 20th century, Kurt Godel, 
Now he was uh, born and got his PhD and completed uh, incompleteness theorem in logic and mathematics. Very close friend of Albert Einstein, and um, he never used to meet anybody. And when he was about to deliver the lecture, he used to face the audience that is back and deliver. The question is that he was never diagnosed autism. The problem is that the IQ level that this person, Dr. Godel, has, he is unable to interact or talk or exchange his ideas. As you have rightly mentioned, that doesn't necessarily means that he is an autistic person. Absolutely, I have gone deep into the research of Kurt Godel and as well as Albert Einstein. What you rightly told, I think that these are all glorification factors. And most importantly, if a person do have an autism, what is the amount of struggle that person has really gone through in order to overcome? So let us. The is message he, would be. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Bhattacharya. Is he cannot be a status symbol? And Absolutely. We, have, yeah. we may have autistic features, but it's a disorder. It's ASD only when the features significantly disrupt our day-to-day -day activities, our, our, uh, our regular life. Only then it's autism spectrum disorder. So it's absolutely, absolutely. It cannot be a status uh, symbol. A status symbol. And absolutely, like the biggest message to all the audience from Dr. Panda would be let us break out all those myths and stories and let us face the reality. We are coming to the end of the session, Dr. Panda. What I would like to know, you know, know from you is that uh, it is a big problem. I understand it is a big challenge, especially for the parents. Uh, we got few parents, one parent who was bold enough to come to one of these five Facebook live session and tell about his experience and how things are following. I would like to request you that what would be your because you have you are absolutely the right person to contribute, uh, you know, suggest something to the parents. What would be your message to the parents in terms of diagnosis, in terms of sociocultural upbringing and how could they cope up with the situation? Right. So at the very beginning, I, I should mention that the kind of struggle a parent with special needs face on day-to-day -day basis, I don't think any other suffering in, in life in, can equal that. So it's a, Absolutely. it's a completely different suffering. It's a completely different journey. And we see wonderful parents around us who have made it like, I mean, they have, they have really done it. They have respected, loved, accepted their child like anything. And, uh, but the thing is, it's, it's very difficult. Parenting yes. a, a child with special needs is very difficult. The, the kind of patience, the kind of love, the kind of affection that we need to, uh, that we always need to have. And also as a society, we are not prepared to su uh, support such parents. We are not prepared. Hmm. We do not have a lot of understanding towards them. We do not have compassion towards them. So it's Absolutely. very difficult for the parents. But as I always say to all the parents I come across, that uh, there are some people in this society who will always be there with you, whatever may come the way. And they will fight the, fight the whole journey together with you. So reach out to people who are going through similar journeys and form support groups that can only be the strength in this society where today people do not care about each other so that can be the best support absolutely well uh, doctor uh, com I, I won't say compare but co considering the amount of research and hard struggle that you have gone through from the asian college of teachers we uh, also do have certain courses in special education and we are trying to uh, i won't say that we are bringing up uh, special educators in literal terms but uh, we are trying to educate we are trying to make people aware and in case there is an inclusive classroom to uh, you know understand the degree of awareness of those people i would like to request you to say a few words do you think this kind of uh, you have seen through the courses that we have you have gone through the curriculum what are your views about Asian College of Teachers and the courses that we have? Yes, uh, basically, uh, the more such courses come up, it's, it's uh, good for the society. And through Asian College of Education, the short term special education course, the training programs, it, it, it's accessible to the society now, particularly in 
as I see in my city. So uh, I come across many people who are eventually I get to know that they are doing some courses from Asian College of Teachers. Definitely, it's good. It's wonderful initiative from the institutions part. And I'm sure with the the way the the global changes in the field of special needs uh, are happening, uh, if we can uh, stay at par with the with the changes, and if we can constantly revise the curriculum and look forward to provide good services through your platform, uh, it's going to be wonderful because the need for special education has gone higher than ever. And it's a wonderful initiative. I thank you as a rehab professional that you have come up with such courses. And I look forward to really effective courses in future and long-term courses. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, to be very honest, uh, I really don't have any words to thank you only with folded hands. I really uh, thank you for coming to us, contributing and enriching all the audience, all the listeners and the entire ACT family. We are so we are hoping to get close association with you because your blessings, your teachings and your researches has contributed immensely to the national and international society. And we would like and request you humbly to hold our hands of ACT and please guide us through this so that we can make more specially able children. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. It's my it's absolutely my pleasure. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to the fraternity about special education. And any way I can I can be of any support, I would be very happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, doctor, very much for a wonderful thank evening. You. Uh, thank you all the viewers. We had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Panda, enlightening and enriching in every part. This is Shonak signing off from Asian College of Teachers. And once more, a heartfelt thanks to Dr. Panda for joining with us. Thank you very much, doctor, and a good evening. Bye. Thank you.